Okay, last time we talked about uh, a method of sometimes called the mobile first method or sometimes called a progressive enhancement where you take a, uh, you, you build a page up um, using two style sheets. The first style sheet everyone gets. All right. By everyone, I mean regardless if you're on a mobile device or on a desktop device. So the first style sheet sort of is your, your base that everyone gets. And then you progressively enhance it. That is, you add stuff on for a, uh, for a, a, a higher-end setting, in, uh, in other words, a higher-end setup. So typically, you would have a mobile version of the page. Uh, that only got the base style sheet, and then you'd have a desktop version of this page, page that got the desktop style sheet plus the enhancements in the second style sheet file. And what controls that are what are called media queries. And what media queries are, are a way of specifying that this style sheet applies just to this situation. And you can use it for a print version of the page as well. So if you go to print, you can make your page be formatted differently. Like, for example, if you had a background image on your page, um, when you printed it out, you probably wouldn't want a background image on the page because that would, that would make it, uh, that, that wouldn't be uh, good. It looks good on the screen, but it wouldn't look good printed on paper. Um, that typically is the way to go if you're doing something from scratch. Um, it forces you to think in terms of the basics of your website and then adding on extra stuff for, again, a higher end, for lack of a better word, platform, a desktop as opposed to a mobile. <clears throat> you might use what's called graceful degradation, which is the same idea but in the opposite direction. Whereas you start out with the full-blown desktop version of the page and you then take things away to form a mobile version. And you write a second style sheet that, that takes stuff away, degrades the page, in other words, makes it simpler, uh, in the second style sheet. And by the same method, you end up with a, a mobile version and a desktop version. If I was doing something by scratch, I would use the mobile uh, first approach. That seems to be, it seems to make more sense to take something basic and add on to it rather than take something complicated and remove stuff. I would use the graceful degradation if I already had, if I went into a customer, let's say, if I went into a client, if I was doing consulting work or if I was hired on somewhere, and they had a desktop version of their site, which they really, really liked, but there were some issues viewing it on a mobile device. And I would say, okay. You already have this. You know that you like it. Let's not mess up that. Let's just take away some stuff on the mobile version to make it uh, work better. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to we're going to we're, we're going to spend a minute reviewing the progressive enhancement one or the mobile first strategy. Then we're going to do where we take stuff away. Now, a few things to keep in mind with media via media query and via some client and or server-side scripting, you could actually make more than one version uh, or more than two versions of, of the page. So for example, um, you could, uh, there, there are ways to tell in more specific detail than media queries allow what kind of mobile device that you have. And you could customize it. So in that case, you might have a version for a very basic flip phone. All right. You might have a version for a smartphone. You might have a tablet version, and then you might have a desktop version. So we're doing just sort of two iterations here, uh, a desktop and a mobile. But you can refine that, especially if you use some server-side scripting or client-side scripting tools to do a little bit more involved detection of uh, who's visiting the site. So let's download that, and let's build upon it. Now. The other thing to keep in mind is, since we're essentially having two style sheets, some of the things I said about like, well, we generally don't use this much anymore because, you know, uh, it doesn't work good on a mobile site. Some of those considerations become a little less important because 
you're having a separate style sheet for the desktop version. So if you have a very intricate layout that you want to achieve, it might be okay to use absolute positioning to get a very specific layout because you're going to go and override that for the mobile version anyhow. All right? So uh, keep that in mind. Since you're developing two style sheets, you can work to make each one, instead of trying like a one-size-fit-all approach, you can work to make it uh, sort of show off and showcase the differences between a mobile version and a desktop version. So let's go and download where we left off last time and look at it and we'll build upon it. Here's a responsive version that we had last time. And if we look at this page, it has this layout on a desktop version. If we switch to a mobile version, like this. So notice that it is simpler, all right, which is typically going to be the case. You will have something as, you know, whereas multiple columns is, is very common on a desktop version of the page, on a mobile version of the page, very often you're going to have a single column. You might get away uh, or, or remove some extraneous stuff. These are all because of the characteristics of a mobile device. Slower bandwidth, a uh, smaller screen, uh, things like that. So if we look at the page, again, it will look different depending on whether we view it on a mobile or on a desktop. What I emphasize, this is identical HTML. We did not change any of the HTML. We only changed the CSS. All right? And notice how we can remove content. Uh, this page has actually three paragraphs. I probably should add a little bit of uh, margin on the desktop one. So I'll go in here and I'll say section P, that's all my paragraphs within the section, I'll do a margin bottom of 5px. So notice that we have three paragraphs here, whereas in the mobile version we only have one paragraph. Likewise, 
we don't have a picture in the mobile version or we do on the desktop version. And again, the way that we do that is we can turn the display off for certain pieces of content. Notice that any image within the section has a display of none. All right. Uh, there's actually two ways that you can make something invisible. You can uh, say the display is none, or you can say visibility hidden. The difference is if you make the visibility if you make the visibility hidden, it still takes up as much space as it would. So generally, like in a case like this where I want to suppress content, I'm going to uh, make the display none. So we can even limit the amount of content. And remember. Typically, people visiting a mobile website, generally speaking, are not looking for as detailed a content. They want answers to very specific questions, typically. So therefore, it's possible to, um, to um, what do I want to say, uh, uh, suppress content that you don't think is quite as important. Questions about this? All right. What I want to do now is I want to go in and I want to take uh, one of these other layouts and do the graceful degradation. So we're going to start out with one of our prototypes that we developed for a desktop. Let's see, what would be a good one? <clears throat> I'm going to rename this one Progressive Enhancement. And let's look in my prototypes and pull one of them out. So I'm going to keep my main CSS file the same because the assumption is, is that's what we want the desktop version to look like. I'm going to th go though and make a second style sheet and I'm going to put in a media query and the media query is going to look similar to what it was in the other one but it's going to be a little bit different. So remember, in this case, the main is the style sheet for the desktop version. And I'm going to make a second style sheet for the mobile version. And I'm going to change the media query to say not screen or maximum device width. 481. Now, let's 
look at that media query a little closer. style sheet Make sure I have everything wired up right, okay, by trying to change one thing because I don't want to go in and create my whole mobile, uh, my whole mobile uh, CSS file if I have a, an error in my media query. So I'm just going to go in right off the bat and try to change the color to red. So. should be red in there. Let me open up the CSS file to verify that. I don't have any colors as far as the colors of the text, so it should be that. Let's Let's look at my media query. even like 600 if we wanted to to account for bigger mobile devices all right iPad notice it shows that so we could actually make this maybe 801 so that we get the same look on an iPad. So this is a, a screen. I guess I was mistaken about the screen. I thought the screen was computer screen only. And the maximum device width is 801. So if we do that, there we go. All right. So I made sure that my media query works. That's just sort of a technique that I do to make sure, because there's no use writing the rest of the CSS file if it's not even like wired right with the media query. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to overrule some of these things. And probably the easiest way to overrule this is if I make the nav and the section have a width of 100%, I think that's going to do what I want it to do. So I can go into mobile and say nav with a hundred percent section 
with 100%. Then I have that layout in a on an iPad. I have this layout on a Galaxy 5, this layout on a Nexus, and so on. So, I have the double column layout here, and if I go to here, I have the uh, single column layout for that. Alright? Just a different way to achieve the same goal. Alright? Questions about this? Um, I would, I would, I would make sure if I used any sort of font that I thought there could be a readability issue, I'd switch to a simpler font on this. My font choices are pretty safe, even on the desktop version, so I don't really find a need to do it. But if, for example, you used on the, let's find a, Decorative font. Actually, let's go. Let's do this this way. And also for the font size, I mean, uh, it's relative to the screen size, right? So do we yes. make it like bigger on a? Um, you could. Level? Yeah, you could. Let's play around with the fonts a little bit. I'll pick a font that I know I have here. Let's do <clears throat> Let's do this on the desktop version. Just for demonstration, I'll do that. All right. So if you had that as your font, you might say, well, again, this is kind of a ridiculous font. But if you had a font that was a little hard to read, you might say, okay, I want to make it clearer on the mobile version. So I'd go in and say body um, font family Helvetica Arial Sans Serif. So I'd get that font there, and when I switched over to here, I'd get the more simple, straightforward font. So yeah, it would be a consideration. The only reason I didn't really consider it in my example is because it was a simple enough font. And you could definitely make it a little bit bigger if you wanted to. You could say font size, 1.2M maybe. Make it a little bigger. Maybe we don't go quite that big. 1.1 M.
other questions? You know, this gives you just a lot of flexibility. So if you wanted to have a design that, you know, like something that you might see on CSS Zen Garden, that was very ornate. Let's pick up one of these. Like that. Notice if we go to a mobile version of this, doesn't really look good there. All right. But looks great on a desktop environment. Um, you don't have to, and I hate this word or this phrase, but you don't have to dumb down if you have a layout that you love in a desktop environment. Uh, you don't have to make it, you don't have to simplify the desktop version. You could keep this, just make sure that you do apply a CSS that would make it simpler. All right? Does that make sense? So don't steer clear from your most creative, beautiful things, all right, uh, in doing the desktop design just because the mobile version has to be simpler. You can still do all the great, creative, cool, clever things that uh, you ever wanted to do in web design. You then just have the ability to go and make a different version of it uh, for mobile. Any questions on any of this? The one other thing I wanted to show you is how to combine stuff into a single style sheet. And um, this is one of those things that is just personal preference. I could say the way I like to do it, but you might find that you'd rather do it another way. Uh, you can actually include the media queries right within your CSS file as opposed to putting the media queries on the link. The way I've done it is I've created two separate style sheets and I've used a media query to say when the style sheet applies. You can actually make one style sheet and have sections of it apply under different situations. So let's go and do that one. Let's copy this one, we'll paste it, and I'll call it alternative. And what I'm going to do here is I'm only going to have one style sheet file, but my style sheet will, inside of it, contain media queries. So I'm going to get rid of this guy from here. I'm going to put everything in the main style sheet. But the main style sheet is going to have media queries for these other things. So let me look up how to do that because I normally don't do it that way. style sheet I'll have and you could organize it any way you wanted to but
confusing myself here. I have to see if this works. It does. Okay, good. So, what I've done here is I've just effectively included. So I only I'm back down to only having one style sheet, but I've embedded the, the media query inside of that. if you want. Uh, my guess would be maybe there is a bug in the style sheet, but, you know, that, that sounds like an individual question. We can take a look at it in LAM. There's something else I was thinking of. Let me see. There's a minimum width versus a minimum device width that you can use. Device width is the entire screen, whereas width relates to um, the size of the window, I believe. See if this makes a difference. Max device width, min device width. So let's say if I change that from if I change that from minimum width to minimum device width. doesn't seem to make a difference in this case. Yeah, I, I believe the, the minimum width is the width of the window. The minimum device width is the uh, width of the entire device. So in this case, it doesn't seem to really matter. Okay, any questions about this? What's due today? I, 
Is it? Oh. I'm mistaken then. <laughs> I thought your design was due today. Is that next week? Okay. Okay, well, never mind then. What, uh, do any of you have questions concerning your design? Do any of you not have a topic picked? And don't lie just to spare my feelings, okay? If you don't, you don't, right? We'll have to deal with it. You don't have a topic picked? Um, wh what about your artwork? I, was, I mean, that seems like a logical one if you don't have a better one in mind. Um, you know, I don't want to, yeah, I, say, I don't want to twist your arm. Anyone else not have a topic picked? What are some of the topics that, did you not have a topic? What are some of the things you're interested in? Yeah, you said you didn't have a topic pick, correct? Yeah. Okay, what are some things that you're interested in? Like, I like video games, I like music, um, do something on music, I guess. Favorite video game? It's a very, very hard question. No, it isn't. It's an easy question. If, if your answer isn't Tetris, you're wrong. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, well, that, that would seem to be a good topic, right? Uh, again, what you want to do... I, I, they, the, these come by... I didn't, I didn't hear you. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you, you know, I can't hear myself. It's like being on an airport runway. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Pokemon would be a good choice. Um, a lot of people do it on video games. The idea what you want to do is you want to pick something that's neither too broad or too narrow. So, um, depend and the other thing you want to do is consider your audience. You know, is your audience someone that is familiar with the game versus someone that's not familiar with the game, and so on. So that would be a good choice, decent choice. Music, pick a favorite band, pick a favorite genre, pick your top five records if they still call them records, which they might or might not, I don't know. Pick your favorite 78s, you know. Uh, anyone else? Anyone else confused about what they need to do with the design? Right. Like for me, I'm thinking of just making a website for um, like book club. Thing. Okay. Just want to like get together, like All right. certain topics, and I was thinking of doing like having like a little calendar to be like, okay, on certain nights we're going to talk about this, this, and that. Okay. For like different range of ages, I think. That that would be good. That would be good. Are you not sure what you need to do for the design of it? Or are, is your confusion about the topic? Um, the design. Okay, the design. Remember, what you're going to do is you're going to have four sections plus a prototype. Uh, a prototype is a sort of a rough draft of your web pages and CSS pages. The four sections are you're going to have a strategy section, which you talk about the goals of the website. Why are people visiting their website? Why are they, you know, what brings your users to the site. What are they looking for? All right. Then finally, what are your goals for the creator of the site? So you'll come up with three typical users of your site, three personas. And you'll identify goals for them and you'll identify goals for you as a creator of the site. In other words, why is your book club creating a website? All right. Second section you have is the scope section. And the scope section 
deals with the specific content that is going to be on the site that's going to help you and your users achieve the goals that they want to achieve. All right? Your goal, for example, might be to recruit some members to the website. That's why you're putting the website up. That might be one of the goals. What content can you put on your website to help achieve that goal? Maybe what books you've discussed in the past. Maybe what upcoming events are. Those sorts of things. The point is, is for every goal, you should have at least have one piece of content that's going to help achieve that goal. All right? The third section is the structure section, where you come up with essentially like a hierarchy of how the pages are going to be organized. Typically, you're going to have your home page, and then maybe from the home page, you'll have a few pages branching out. Maybe from some of those pages, you'll have sub-pages that branch out from that. And then finally, you have a skeleton section, where the skeleton section is where you create a wireframe. A wireframe is where you uh, say, well, for my pages, this is the basic layout of my pages. I'm going to have a title going across the top of the page. I'm going to have navigation going down the left side of the page. I'm going to have content in the middle of the page. I'm going to have news on the right of the page. And I'm going to have a footer on the bottom of the page. Maybe all my pages will be laid out that way. Maybe one or two will be a little bit different just because they're, they're something different about the pages. All right? And then you have your prototype, where you have sort of rough drafts of at least three of the pages that you're considering building. All right? You're welcome to email me what you have before you turn it in. So my suggestion is if you're not sure of what the design is, don't wait to turn it in until next Thursday. I'm going to mail to me whenever you have something. Mail me the first after you've wrapped up the first section, after you've wrapped up the first two sections, whatever. And I'll be glad to give you feedback. Now, as typically goes, uh, it's better to email me and don't just, like, turn it in. Right? Turn it in is if you're pretty sure that you have it as good as you could possibly make it. All right. If you're wanting feedback, and this goes for any assignment or any project, if you have a question or you want feedback, email it to me as opposed to turning it in. Because I do my best to stay up on grading. Sometimes I fall behind. Sometimes I'm caught up. But my email, I stay caught up with pretty much every day, or at least every couple of days. I, if you, so if you send an email today, there's a good chance by tomorrow you'll have an answer for it. As opposed to grading, I might not get to it for a week or a week and a half. All right? So that would be my suggestion. Those four sections plus the prototype. And when you have something, send it to me and I'll take a look at it. Okay, and uh, what's the minimum amount of pages on the It's listed on the assignment. I think it says five to seven. Okay. Yes. Well, again, remember the purpose of a prototype, all right? The purpose of the prototype is to give someone a good idea of what you plan the site to look like. So, a prototype with no CSS probably wouldn't be a good prototype. Because that might give them a sense of the content, but not really a sense of how it's going to look. All right? A prototype with CSS where there's some loose ends. Like maybe the margins aren't worked out correctly. Maybe the margins are a little funky. Or um, you haven't completely settled on the color scheme yet, but maybe you want the color scheme to be greens. So, yeah, you might not have exactly settled on the color scheme, but you know it's not going to scheme, but you know it's not going to be orange or whatever. So, yeah, you'd put you'd put that uh, you'd make sure that was on there. You might not have all your content, but ideally you'd have some of the content because you want them to see uh, um, what you know, get a sense of what the website's going to be, 
both in terms of the way it's going to look and the content that's going to be in it. Uh, you might want to have the full navigation there, even if you don't have all the pages. So if you're planning on six pages, your navigation has six pages, even if two of them, when you click on it, says that page doesn't exist. Think of it like a rough draft. You need enough of it so that people can look at it and give you feedback. On the other hand, there's no need making it perfect. Because with a prototype, there's a chance that you're going to get feedback and you're going to have to make revisions to it. So you don't have to sweat all the little tiny details for that. Maybe use Greek text on a page. I wouldn't use it on all your pages, though, just to give a sense of what the real content is going to be. Maybe you are uh, looking, maybe you, maybe you have some placeholder pictures that you don't have the exact pictures that you want. But, yeah, just for layout reasons, maybe you'll, you'll post a picture in there, just a stock photo or something, just to give an idea. Maybe like if you, if you were showing like a process, like how to, um, how to chop down a tree, all right? Maybe you're actually planning on going and filming a video or taking pictures of you chopping down a tree, but you haven't done that yet. Well, you could put a picture of someone else chopping down a tree and say, well, that's where the picture of me chopping down a tree is going to be. Uh, you know, it really is sort of a gray area, you know. Uh, you want it to be representative of what your plans are so people can look at it and make some decisions whether they like it or not and provide some feedback. You know, it, it, the, it's almost the same question of how complete does a rough draft have to be. Think of it like in an English class. If you're writing a paper, the assumption is that the rough draft is not going to be perfect. All right, it's going to show like what your main ideas are, and maybe you need more detail here. Maybe you need to get more references in here. Maybe you need to do some cleaning up of the spelling or, or reword some things or whatever. That's fine, but it gives the person looking at it and reading it a sense of where you're going, a sense of where you're going to be. And I would say a prototype should be the same thing. That's one of the toughest questions to answer because I don't, you know, I can't say it should be this good or, you know, it, can't, it should be 50% correct or whatever. It really is sort of a judgment call. But again, you can err either direction, either obsessing over it and making it perfect or just throwing something together that doesn't show anything of what the page is going to look like. Yeah. Yeah. Does it need to be responsive? Do we need to have two designs or three? Um, that's a real good question. I would expect the final version to be, uh, and I should explicitly say that. Uh, that could be part of what you say in it that, uh, you know, when you turn into prototype, you could say that the desktop version works, but not the mobile version or whatever. Um, it shouldn't. It should look reasonably good, both in a mobile device and a desktop uh, device. So yeah, that's a good point. That should be something I revise and make more explicit. I think I vaguely say that the page should be well designed. Well, in my mind, well designed means that it looks good. And it's responsive and it looks good both on a, on that. But I should I should say that say that specifically. Other questions? All right, that's all I had today. Um, I'll go unlock the door. I'll come back here to grab my files and then I'll be back in lab.